you got back here with another San Juan Meadery episode with the mango. We already got our water here put into the jar. Not a full gallon because we have to mix the honey first. What we got here is a family size clover honey. It's from Lidl. And we got that one's the 2.5 pound and this one here is just a little over a pound 24 ounces so we're gonna mix those in this is gonna be about as strong as the honey mead i'm predicting so once we have the yeast timer go off here in about four more minutes we're gonna add that in that's over here settling in. it's called um actually activating the yeast Another word Kristen used was yeast slurry. Yeast slurry that we're going to add to the jar after it's done. So we got everything good to go. Uh, star sands being used here. We uh, sanitized the tube, the hydrometer, and the beaker. Is that what you said? Call it. Yeah. And then, of course, we have some mead just sitting here to sip on while we're making it also have the yeast nutrient this is used like when you start the fermentation process just to help out the yeast and the reactions to make alcohol and then also as you've seen in the last video the fun bubbly little airlock that will produce bubbles after 24 hours approximately of the yeast fermentation starting but without further ado let's get started here and start making the mead mixture Once our channel gets bigger and maybe if we have a few donations come in, we might actually be able to start purchasing uh, local honey here in uh, Virginia. So maybe we might try that for our next uh, couple batches after this. Right now we're just using locally uh, sourced uh, from the food market, not locally uh, made or produced. And Kristen and I are thinking about maybe some weekend going out to the meadery here in town, maybe taking some pictures and doing some taste testing on video for you guys, just to show you on the San Juan meadery, uh, meadery <laughs> age. There's also a festival that we got going on coming up on Wednesday. What's it called? Newport News Block or something like that. All different types Port, of... Port Warwick block party. Yeah, Port Warwick uh, block party. All different types of bands and food, drinks, fun time, so... I'm going to speed this process up here. We're almost done with this bottle. It's pretty cool to see it fall into the jar there. I don't know if it's focused on there. This bottle is pretty much done. We're gonna put the cap on it and let it trickle down the rest of the way while we fill in the other one. Right. Set that right there. And that's how much we already got in it right now. That's pretty thick as you can see. Probably about a good three and a half inches of honey. So we're going to add a little bit more, and then we're going to shake it all up. Take this bottle here. I like how you can see the kind of shine there and rising up to the top. All right. Take a sip of our mead here. Timer 
should be just about done for our yeast after this honey's been added. this is added we'll be able to take the hydrometer reading for the alcohol by volume percentage and this is not a final percentage of alcohol this is just a beginning or starting gravity as you'd like to say and you're doing half that bottle right So, because I want to kind of match the same mixture that we already have for the honey meat and the mango meat, I'm just going to do half of this bottle. So you're not going to actually, we're not going to actually go through the whole thing. So, about half. And now we're going to just shake it up. The jar that is with the mixture. I like these jars a little bit better because they're really wide at the top so kind of helps to get out like the different types of fruits that you put in it as well as uh, being able to put a funnel in it to uh, make it go into a secondary jar. Alright, so that's done. That's, I'm not adding the yeast yet. I'm getting ahead of myself here. So we're going to screw this on. And it's okay to remove this. We're going to just have to actually pour more star sand into there. because it's going to react with the yeast and the yeast and the honey while it's eating all the sugar is going to produce the alcohol for this mango meat. So about two weeks we'll be able to secondary bottle it and then another week after that we're going to be able to maybe even bottle it a third time or rack it a third time. And that basically what it's going to do is remove all the yeast and remove all the leftover mango particles and then we're going to filter it with a bentonite and it's going to take one more week. So maybe we actually might be able to have this done before we go on vacation. I'm going to switch arms real quick. So a little bit different setup this time. We're gonna actually have a beaker that we're gonna test the alcohol instead of having to funnel it into the beaker. That's kind of messy. As always, if you guys have any, have any questions or anything about this, then you guys can let us know. Um, and you also want to get air bubbles in here. It's, it's good for having the mixture, getting it started with fermentation process. All right, I think that's good. Sit down, move your finger. From here, before, 
you have in the east, you want to take the beaker here, the test beaker. Should do. I'm gonna take that back because there is gonna be sugars coming from the mango. We wanna add in the mango. Don't you wanna add in the yeast first? What's that? Don't you wanna add in the yeast first? No, mango first because mango in the water and honey mixture also tells how much sugar is in the mango. Like approximate. It's not gonna be super super close. So we got. Uh. Not a whole lot of in the top. I'm gonna add a couple of these. I mean, who knows? It might not even change the reading because the the sugars and the mango haven't actually been taken out yet, but it could change it a little bit. So. here that we got. Here they are. So, just add a few more. Okay. What we're going to do here is now take this. Some people say that the mead that, not the mead, but the wort that you take out of here and put into the beaker that you're not supposed to dump back into the wort. So we're going to follow that just for sanitary reasons. second that's going to stop and this here is going to be called the starting gravity so i'm going to actually get my phone no, she just has my phone so i'm going to scoot a little bit closer here to the light so i can read a little bit better okay so where the water actually hits on this one here let's spin it to the side here so you can see it's past one and you go down to each point and it's going to be tens, hundreds, thousands place. So it's past the 30 point, just around close to the 40 line. I'm not really focusing. Okay, so it's right around the 40 line. I want to say... I want to say just above the 40 line. So it's probably right about 1.038 to be safe. But the line that you actually read is not the line that the hits. It's actually going to be a flat, straight line. So that's why I'm kind of looking underneath. And I think it's actually hitting the, the 40 line. So it's going to be at 1.0. Four zero starting gravity. I want to go ahead and record that in here. So I'm gonna record this. So I recorded the starting gravity starting at one point zero four zero. So do a little bit of math here. Tens, hundreds, thousands. Okay. So that gives us an idea of where it's starting at. Now you can look at the other side of it. Let's show you. And if you want to look at the other side and see alcohol by volume, try to focus, it's going to say about 5%. OK, 
Okay, but what we also have to figure in is after the gravity, what it's going to be then. Now we got to add in the yeast. So we got to add in the yeast. We're going to keep this in the test tube. Because like I said, people have said that they don't like it being put back into the jar. So we're going to add this in. Make sure it's all mixed together. See how that kind of pushes it back close to the top, but not too much to the top. So I give it a little bit of room to rise up, have the CO2 mix up, and do the process of fermentation. Let's get this last little bit in there. Want all these guys that we can working for us. stop the fermentation process sooner if you want to say you come by and you take another reading um, the reading is going to require you to still have to take some of it out so it's usually a good rule of thumb to do one reading before or one reading after you don't want to have too many readings we get a little bit Since that's all in there and the mango's all in there, all that's left to do is put a little bit of star sand here into the water lock. As you can see here, it's down a little bit, so we actually have to add some in there. These are the nice kind of air locks. Before we had one that was really hard to remove. So this one here, you just basically Press on the star sand. It fills up the little chamber up top. Keeps it sanitary so that way nothing bad comes into the mixture. It's allowed to escape a CO2 and nothing else is allowed in. Is there anybody on there? Your mom. Hi, mom. How's everything going? All right, so we got that filled up in there. Close to the min and max line. I want to put the cat back on. This is locked on there. We push that down. Okay. So this, you don't want to shove it in there because then you might risk that your little stopper goes in there as well. Your air lock seal. So you just want to slightly push down, twist, twist, and that's good. I'm going to look down here to make sure that there's enough gap. All you gotta do is close tight. And that's it. It's all ready. We just gotta let it sit for some time and put it in the put a shirt around it or towel and leave it in the dark. That's it. Thanks for watching.